So welcome to this uh, class of the scanning electron microscopy. So before I start uh, the, the topic on scanning electron microscopy, so I'll just uh, brief uh, what is the difference between normal uh, optical microscope with the electron microscope. So in case of your, uh, particularly in case of the uh, normal microscope, we have the light source only. Whereas in the, uh, in particularly, In electron microscope, it's a beam of electron actually, beam of very first moving electrons. The specimens are used as to be specifically prepared and held inside a vacuum chamber for which the air has been pumped out. Okay? The lenses are replaced by a series of oil set electromagnets through which the electron beam travels and we try to converse the beam so that we have a specific probe current. Okay? Whereas it is not there in particularly our uh, or normal optical microscope. So it just so that means the image is formed as a photograph or an image with TV screen and that actually help us to understand much more detail about the features which are present in the surface of a specific specimen. So this these are the difference in case of our normal optical microscope and the electron microscope. If we just see an uh, uh, image here, you could just easily understand it is actually a circuit. Okay, integrated circuit. Left side is a light microscope, whereas in right side is with the help of the scanning electron microscope. You can see the difference. In the scanning electron microscope, you can get the 3D appearances of the circuit, whereas in the normal microscope, light microscope, you cannot see that. So that's why to understand the material in proper shape and characterize properly, we use scanning electron microscope specifically for understanding our own material. So what is electron microscope? Electron microscope are scientific instruments that actually use a beam of energetic electrons to examine objects on a very fine scale. Electron microscope are developed due to the limitation of light microscope. So we have just seen two uh, photographs of an integrated circuit where 3D image and a specific pattern is easily recognized. But in case of the normal microscope, it is not there. So with the specific limit of the optical microscope, generally 1930, this theoretical limit has been reached and there is a scientific desire to see the fine details of the individual structures of the organic scale, so cell. So it starts with that and then people have started developing the electron microscope. So what is it actually? Electron microscope generate image of material microstructure with much, much higher magnification and resolution than light microscope. The high resolution of electron microscope results from short wavelength of the electron used in the microscope illumination. So here we are using electron beams actually to understand. And the wavelength of electrons in electron microscope is about 10,000 times than that of our normal visible light. That's why the resolution of the photography or image with the help of same and TIM is much higher than particularly the normal optical microscope. So this part particularly what we have discussed, so what, there are mainly two types of electron microscopy. One is transmission electron microscopy and another is scanning electron microscopy. So if I just, so what is the difference of transmission electron microscopy or maybe scanning electron microscopy? So scanning electron microscopy examine particularly the superficial feature. It will scan only the surface of the material similar to scanning confocal microscopy, but with much higher resolution and much greater depth. Whereas in case of transmission electron microscope, the, it will study the inner microstructure. And 10 image is formed by instantaneous illumination of the whole field, whereas the electron will interact and they will give us different types of secondary electrons or maybe X-ray and we try to capture that signal and get the image. Most important feature of same is the three-dimensional appearance of the large depth of field and same system enables us to obtain chemical information from the specimen by using various techniques. So if we have energy dispersive disperse spectrom spectrometer, we could get also the specific composition range also. So this is what is the advantage in, in our specific scanning electron microscopy with EDS detector, energy dispersive X-ray detector. Okay. Now just to see the figure instrumentation. So you can just see what are the, so we use the electron gun. Then we have different types of electromagnetic, uh, basically electromagnetic lenses, which 
generally condense our uh, this electron beam so we have the acceleration voltage of generating an electron beam is an so it's a huge voltage we generally use to standardize our electron beam and the electron beam emitted from an electron gun is condensed to a fine probe for surface scanning so that means we are generating high with a high voltage the electron beam and with the help of this condenser condensers now the objective lens also is a condenser okay so that means with the help of this different condenser actually we try to convert the electron beam in a very nanometer scale probe which actually help us to get the surface feature okay so this is one part so the optical part goes to the several electromagnetic lenses so you could understand here is a very complicated uh, structure this is actually the outer look and this is the inner side so how the electron beam passes through different condenser okay so these two condenser lenses reduce the con crossover diameter of the electron beam the objective lens focuses on the electron beam so you can see here the objective arrangement objective lens as a probe with the diameter on the nano nanometric scale so that means the objective lens lens is finally converging the uh, in, in the nanometric diameter okay the objective lens should be considered as a third condenser lens in the same because it functions more like a condenser rather than the objective lens okay so for a uh, so what we can use two source one is thermionic source whereas in field emission source we can use for generating our electron beam so probe scanning is operated by beam deflection system incorporated with the objective lens of the same so here also the final part okay the deflection system moves the probe over the specimen surface so where we have a specimen here okay so this is specimen chamber and we put the specimen here you can see the specimen here okay this specimen so what we can move this specimen also so what the beam will move in a line form generally in the line scan then displace the probe to a position on the next line for scanning so that means what with the help of basically with the deflection system we change the beam from one line to another line and trying to get a basically rectangular raster for generating the specimen surface okay so that means one by one line we are trying to get the information and then we are getting a rectangular uh, signals or rectangular information of the whole sample the signal electrons emitted from the specimen so after that i will discuss detail about how the interaction is happening and the signals are coming out okay so the signal electrons emitted from the specimens are collected by a detector amplifies and used to reconstruct the image according to one to one correlation between scanning point on the specimen and picture point on the screen of a cathode ray tube or liquid crystal display so that means once you could understand this connection will be with a computer so that directly we are trying to correlate the measuring point or the signal information along with the image formed either on a screen or in a cathode ray tube so the deflection system of the electron probe is controlled by two pairs of electromagnetic coil scan coil so you can see here the scanning coil this scanning coil so we have two pairs of scanning coil they will actually use to deflect or to orient specific beam in a specific direction so the first pair of coil bends the beam of the optic axis of the microscope then it will bend and the second pair of just it will take back again in a specific position so you could just see the diagram here so just here the electron gun then we have different electromagnetic uh, lenses okay through which we are trying to uh, reduce the crossover okay magnetic lens the scanning coil in the with the help of two then we are uh, you, you are trying to get your objective lens here okay so that actually and then what it is your stage on that you may you put your samples then from the samples we try to gather different informations okay so with the help of the detector because we'll see afterwards how basically the uh, different signals are coming and we are collecting different signals for getting different information for the sample of the sample surface so this is what if you see the inside story and this is the surface uh, or maybe the instruments from the outside okay so that means we have a lot of complicated uh, systems and the sophisticated uh, with the high voltage uh, is put here okay so that actually give us lot of information okay so now once we have completed the instrumentation part now how the Uh, basically the beam interacts with the sample surface 
so this is the electron beam falling on the surface so this is uh, your specimen surface okay so once it is entering so when light high energy electrons strike the specimen they produce either elastic or inelastic scattering so hopefully 10 plus 2 level you have understood an elastic an elastic scattering and inelastic scattering okay so that means when you have this deflecting or when you have some replacement so that is different types of scattering is there in an electronic scale okay so elastic scattering produces the back scatter electron which are incident electrons scatter at atoms in the specimen okay that means what when we are putting or hitting this plant we are getting one which is called back scatter electron okay back scatter electron which is which are incident electrons scattered by atoms in a specimen so that means the same electron is coming back after scattering elastic scattering with uh, in the specimen atom so inelastic scattering means it is just like when you are playing playing actually carrom sometimes we see one if we put one uh, black with another black sometimes the black is completely replaced and wherever in the heavy um, uh, let's say if we hit with a black to a striker sometimes it will deflect so inelastic scattering is that sort of uh, uh, interactions what is happening elastic scattering produces secondary electrons which are electrons ejected from atoms in the specimen so that means in initial case when it is elastic scattering the same electron is coming back interacting with atoms whereas inelastic scattering is another electron is ejected from the atoms in the specimen okay so back scattered electrons are typically deflected from the specimen at large angle and with little energy loss whereas they typically retain 60 to 80% of the energy of the incident electron in contrast secondary electrons are typically deflected at small angle and so considerable a low energy compared to the incident electron that means when it is interacting you could understand we could get two types of uh, electrons coming back one is with the help of elastic scattering another is secondary electron generated from the atoms of the specimen itself okay so this is just a, a diagrammatic monte carlo electron trajectory simulation of an iron uh, iron uh, samples okay Oh, with iron so with a voltage of 20 kilo uh, electron volt okay so this is one which we have discussed so you can understand when we are hitting the specimen it can go deep okay deep so what low angle deflection with low energy okay small angle deflection with a low energy and high angle deflection with a high energy so that means we are getting two specific angle and two specific energy of electrons which are important for our next discussion okay So now this these are just uh, diagrammatic uh, representation what we discussed. Okay, so one you can see this is actually the back scattered electron. That means the same electron hitting with the nucleus of or of the atom, uh, sample atom, they are coming back. Okay, so that means this is actually the primary beam electrons, high energy comp uh, composition and topography. That means if you really wanted to get the specific composition and topography and surface feature of the specific sample, then you could go or you could uh, get the detector and the detection of your back scatter electron which is coming back okay so secondary electrons which are generated from the sample sample electrons ejected by the primary beam okay so once it hit secondary electrons will generate okay with a low energy and low uh, low energy and the low deflection angle so okay. surface details and topography that also you could get and sometimes we get the x ray what we discussed in the last class also the um, x ray xrd okay where we have seen if you have the uh, specifically some due to the excitation whenever you are getting certain um, electron jump from lower to higher energy so automatically the gap will be uh, basically filled by electron going down there and some uh, ray x ray will be generated due to that okay so sometimes we can get the x a x x ray uh, also after the interaction of the beam with the sample surface okay so that means what is happening the electron gun produces an electron beam when tungsten wire is heated by current so it's maybe a tungsten maybe other type of also uh, your um, sources the beam is accelerated by the anode that means we have electromagnetic coil lens so that actually help us to cross over the beam and so the beam travels through electric electromagnetic field and lenses Which focuses the beam down towards the sample. That means 
what we try to convert the beam into very nanometric scale beam diameter okay so this is the main purpose of putting so much of electromagnetic field and lenses a mechanism of deflection coil guides the beam so that it scans the surface of the samples in a rectangular frame okay so that means the rectangular frame it could that i just discuss line by line and it is giving you a rectangular pattern of the scanning when the beam touches the surface of the samples we discuss that we can get backscatter electron we can get secondary electron we can get x ray also so that is the interaction happening due to the beam when it strikes the sample surfaces so the emitted secondary electron is collected by secondary electron detector and converted into signal and that is sent to the screen which produces the final signal that means what each and every signals we can capture and get a different information for the specific samples we get okay so this is some, some it cannot be done some simultaneously but once you choose for a specific detector to um, uh, capture the information that could be done so this is in one go if we just try to understand or visualize what is happening just the, the this diagram okay so the earlier diagram what so we are generating high um, energy electron beam here it will pass through different uh, electromagnetic lenses and the um, uh, field and lenses it would try to converge and when it is falling on the sample it will be a nanometric um, uh, probe diameter which falls on the surface once it strikes the samples actually it interacts in different form once it interacts in different form so obviously you, uh, you are uh, going to get uh, the different uh, electrons coming out it's not only electron it's x ray also so backscatter electron your um, secondary electrons and then you are getting the x ray also so once uh, once we uh, uh, plan to uh, record certain of uh, record certain sort of information accordingly we just give the instruction which detector you wanted to get and what sort of image you wanted to uh, capture so this is what the whole part is okay so now we'll go uh, to different parts so it's a detector so this is also a part of the instrumentation okay so this is actually what is happening when your uh, beam is striking here you can get the b b stands for backscatter electron you can say low angle is your secondary electron this is high angle you can understand isn't it so high angle deflection as well as high energy whereas these are the low angle and low uh, deflection angle and low energy also and also sometimes we get x ray x ray so f is faraday cage so you can see it's a faraday cage is and s is a scintillator okay so s is scintillator then you are getting the lg light guide and then is a photo multi player uh, tube so that means the when the signal is captured here or the information is captured here, it is now going to your system to get the proper uh, information so this is what it is written here okay so image in the modern same are recorded digitally so this is what the actual capturing information for your um, either different uh, electrons image in the modern same are recorded digitally this is that that is the intensity of the signal electrons for each pixel is digitized and saved on computer as a digital file for each scan an advantage of digital imaging is the ability to generate an image by averaging multiple scans for the same area such a frame averaging method can effectively reduce background noise in imaging so what for the same points we could <coughs> we could use Uh, multiple scans and try to get an average information for recording and getting the information more average okay so now how actually we give more uh, or we could we could capture very fine or maybe very high, high resolution resolute uh, the images okay so for that we need to little bit understand the instrumentation part and the relations also so the resolution of same imaging is determined by the cross sectional diameter of the scanning probe so i discussed that's why your scanning scanning probe must be in a optimum size so the size of the probe limits the size of the features on a specimen surface to be resolved that means whatever the electromagnetic um, fields and lenses we are using so that it should converge in a specific way or the diameter or and falling onto the specific sample specimen okay to obtain high resolution we should Uh, we should know how to minimize probe size the probe diameter is approximately expressed so it is related to certain uh, parameter so ip is the probe current okay so this is your probe current that means and what we because we are generating high voltage and how we are trying to get the probe current 
beta is the beam brightness okay so beam brightness also controlled by the electron source because what we will discuss it may be a, a field emission it may be the tungsten also we could use to generate okay so that means uh, thermo ionic or field emission so both the both type of source we could use so that we will discuss after what the alpha f is the convergence angles of the probe so you could see depending on the convergence angle you may get your tip of the probe size so which is determined by the final aperture diameter and the distance between aperture and the specimen surface all the working distance so this working distance okay so this is how depending on your source depending on your system depending on your uh, specifically your aperture or specimen surface where you putting you could get the basically your uh, resolution of your instrumentation okay so maybe uh, your image so the brightness of electron illumination or beam brightness depends on the type of electron gun so beta what we discussed just now so beta you can see here tungsten filament you could use because uh, your lab that means um, uh, lanthanum with lb means uh, your boron okay so um, uh, uh, maybe uh, one uh, your alloy okay and field emissions we, we use okay so if, if you see here the value of the brightness is very high here so field emission guns is 1000 times brighter than the tungsten thermo ionic gun or 100 times brighter than the lab okay thermo ionic gun so you could understand when we are purchasing or uh, trying to get certain instruments or in which instruments we are uh, trying to analyze our sample that can guide what should be our way to deal with this uh, instrument because if you don't know you you cannot get your brighter or maybe the good uh, resolution in your sample image so that's why you should be very careful when we are using okay so thus the field emission gun has been widely used in advanced scanning electron microscope system so that means field emissions are now using so if you just see your probe current depending on your type of uh, your uh, source you could see your probe diameter so depending on your probe use your probe current and also probe diameter so this probe size is determined by the type of electron gun and probe current so that means whenever we are trying to use each and every instrumentation part or parameters are helping us to get our proper image right okay so here what is there you can see probe size determined by the elect acceleration voltage of the electron gun so we have discussed we use uh, different types of source it may be a tungsten filament it may be uh, your uh, your um, uh, uh, thermo ionic tungsten and you may have your uh, this uh, field uh, field emission So depending on that, you see here you can, we use high voltage. Okay, the number of counts in a number of signal electrons being detected. Thus, the relationship between counts and current signal electrons or the dwell time or probe time on the object is calculated in the following expression. So what is happening? You see, we have one uh, current is coming and how much it is falling. So this is here the tau. Okay, this time of the probe, how much it is falling on the Specific sample surface. All will be giving you actually the uh, number of counts in the signal electrons. What signals we are sending. So is not equal to probe current. So what your IES? IES is the signal electron may not be your probe uh, current, but it is equivalent to a probe current. So that is that means what we are when we are generating a specific uh, um, for a specific source, uh, we have some signal electrons, but that may not be the probe. current in most of the cases okay so but it is a proportional relation so this minimum requirement or threshold value for probe current is necessary to observe a certain level of object contrasting strength so that means you require a minimum probe current so that you should get proper illumination and proper resolution of your sample surface so that's why you should be careful enough when we are operating as uh, an instrument this to be very much important this is the tau that is frame time the dwell time of the probe is often expressed in terms of time required for scanning one frame so you need to keep a specific time otherwise you won't get a specific resolution so here you can see depending on the time your contrast is you see here if you are keeping your contrast but it will con and if your time is more frame time second you can see here minus 6 minus 7 okay so contrast is increasing here so you have a optimum so in summary the resolution of an same is determined by the probe size and probe current the important point to note here that 
the minimum probe size and minimum maximum current cannot be obtained simultaneously so this is a critical issue okay so that means we need to get an optimum resolution of our specific sample surface so what maximum probe size minimum probe size or maximum current you cannot get simultaneously so what you need to compromise between the probe size and the probe current so that you get maximum resolution or high resolution of your sample so this is how Generally, when you are working with the same scanning electron microscope, you should be uh, very much knowledgeable. That means the experience matters sometimes. So you see, with working with different types of samples, you may get your knowledge with time. The okay, these are the this type of samples. So what should be my specific way dealing with the sample? Okay. So now topographic contrast because if you have, we generally get the three dimensional configuration in this. So topographic contrast in the same refers to variation in signal levels. that corresponding to variation in geometric feature on the specimen surface left side is your same image whereas right side the uh, optical optical light how does it happen so even optical image your samples is deflected your samples are rough you won't get proper sample so a same image with topographic contrast often has a stereoscopic uh, appearance that means what is happening you are getting your beam deflected is coming back Okay, so beam is falling here, and you are getting your deflection because we have discussed because it is interacting with your atoms and is generating different electrons. So that actually not be very homogeneous. Okay, so the topographic contrast occurs because signal electrons arise from two effects: the trajectory effect, the electron number effect. So two things are important. One is depending on the interactions in which direction your all the electrons are going. It may be the backscatter electron, it may be your secondary electron. and the number of electrons how much you are getting into your detector that is also an important part so the trajectory effect arises from variation in how the specimen surface is oriented with respect to your detector okay so that means if your sample here what is happening depending on this your uh, surface of the samples the electrons are moving away because you have general interaction with the atoms and accordingly your uh, backscatter electron and the secondary electrons are coming back but here is only deflection and a reflected light so depend if your surface is not proper you won't get proper reflection so you are not in your basically in objective lens or maybe in your detector you may not get uh, the uh, uh, signal the right okay so there is two different thing here rough surface but here you may have rough surface but the deflections and the numbers may vary depending on the interaction is happening into your specific uh, sample so now just see what is happening the contrast okay so electron numbers electron numbers effect due to the surface topography okay most secondary electrons can escape from the edge of topographic topographic as than from the flat surface so what is happening when the electrons are falling you can understand that electron probe is falling here more electrons escape so that means the electrons are moving out from the system okay so more, so that means escape from the system means you will encounter more electrons in your detector okay so you see here the how it is interacting in the different it is a plane okay here you see where it is falling on the edge just a you see more more electrons escape whereas when it is falling on a flat area fewer electrons escape okay then the electron numbers effect due to surface topography most secondary electrons can escape from the edge of topographic than from the flat surface so that means when it is uh, removing or it is escaping from your uh, surface so that means what is happening you will detect more number of electrons in your detector so you just this figure is the uh, reflection of same effect you can see secondary electrons image of a cracked silicon surface this is a silicon where you have a cracked uh, silicon electron number effect make the edge more illuminated because more numbers of electrons are uh, coming that's why it is appears to be an illuminated area okay rather than the flat surface we will come to that what is happening when we are getting the other information right also okay so compositional contrast what is compositional contrast let's say a sample having different element present into that so compositional contrast refers to the variation in gray level in a same image that corresponded to variation in the chemical composition in a specimen an image formed by backscatter electron exhibit very useful composition contrast if the specimen 
consist of more than one chemical element that means if your variation in the composition let's say you have lighter uh, atoms you have the heavier atoms also elements also that also because the interaction pattern will be different okay once you have the interaction pattern you can see the deflection coefficient okay the back scatter coefficient the origin of the compositional contrast arises because the capability of back scatter electron to escape from the specimen depends on the atomic number of the specimen atom okay so if you see here with the atomic number the back scatter coefficient is increasing that means the back scatter coefficient characterizes such co this the formulations and you can see in the uh, diagram also with the back scatter number your back scatter coefficient is increasing so once you see it so you can understand so composition contrast the first so what is there is the ratio so back scatter coefficient is a function of atomic number so once you have a samples having different elements having different atomic number so that can give you an a gray version or a highly ionized version depending on the elements present and that can give guide you your samples variations okay the composition variation into your samples itself so now the same diagram you see an area in a specimen containing chemical elements with higher atomic number will generate more bc because if a uh, back scatter coefficient is more when you have the higher specific elements higher atomic number elements so the difference in the number of bc collected by detector will appear as difference in gray level in a black and white image so if you see here this is an area with atoms of higher atomic number will appear brighter so you can understand when you are getting a dark in darker part that means the elements present or the atoms present here is the lower lower atomic numbers whereas illuminated part but once you see here it is two picture one is your secondary electron image this is secondary electron image and this is back scatter image okay So you see, there is also a difference. That means, what are the informations you wanted to gather? That will guide you what sort of detector you want to use and what sort of image you want to capture. That is, you need to decide what is your features you wanted to capture in your image. So that is the comparison. So you can understand it is a nickel alloy. If you have the nickel alloy, additional composition information is obtained from the back scatter image. You can see here the further highly illuminated area. is giving you some much more compositional difference than the your secondary electron image okay so this is what is the difference that means once you know your subject once you know what is you what you are going to do for your specific uh, data then actually it will help you to operate your instrument right way or maybe to get your proper contrast what should be changed for in your instrumentation part as well as your sample part and how you to prepare your sample okay so another part is operational variable so more or less the scientific part i have deal with the basic uh, knowledge here also when if you are going to operate an um, uh, scanning electron microscope image which you should be careful enough so i another part also should be very careful so what it is necessary to understand operational variables to obtain a good same image with desired depth of field and resolution this section discuss how to control the depth of field and resolution by adjusting operation variable such as the working distance field aperture uh, aperture size acceleration voltage probe current and astigmatism uh, okay so that means what the instrumentation also we could change the operational value of the instrumentation part and we could also get the difference okay so here you see here the electron beam aperture diameter working distance then your depth of field okay So that means how much your uh, uh, sample or uh, maybe beam is entering into your sample. Okay. So the working distance, aperture size, all having a role to play for your uh, the image uh, quality. Okay. So here you can see the magnifications. If you wanted to get a higher magnification, you should see your aperture. Okay. Depth of field and same image, and you can see your variations. Okay. So that means once you Really wanted to a high magnification image, then you should change all the parameters for your specific image capture. Okay, here you can see the same thing, but how effects of final aperture radius, okay, and working distance on the depth of field. You see, this is your specific working uh, distance, and this is your aperture di aperture uh, diameter. Okay, so now you see this first one, second one, third one, and fourth one. Each and everywhere you can see that there is a difference. Okay, that means students. 
so this will help so this will help us to understand specifically the depth of your sample information okay so now sir there is connection problem uh, so i have more or less completed this part okay so now you see depending on your uh, acceleration voltage if you change how how the image you are getting into your sample samples okay so then another few samples you see this is your autism okay depending on that you see the variations of your specific sample okay so image if you have a conductive or non conductive sample so depending on that also you may have Uh, some sort of uh, charging effect so here you see gross charging effect on teflon samples where you have non conducting samples where you have charging causes unstable signal so you are you see your variations in your sample okay so this is how when we are getting we have different types of same okay conventional same variable pressure and low vacuum you have a cryo scan and cryo scan also you have environmental scanning electron microscope so different type of available uh, same as uh, they are depending on your samples you could use different types of same and this is widely applied in different uh, domain of our research and activity so whenever you are planning for your master thesis maybe uh, this uh, uh, should be useful for your specific uh, applications also okay so image morphology of samples image composition some bonding differences examine over and dry samples while well, viewing them view frozen material cryo cryosen okay so generate x ray from samples from micro analysis energy dispersive uh, scanning electron so you can get your compositions right okay so maps also to orient crystallographic orientation so that means in each and every cases we have some work with our own uh, data here okay so that means we have done with our low saline water flooding and we have uh, the scan the particularly the clay minerals before and after uh, the low saline water flooding how they look like and with the help of same image we have justified certain part which are actually uh, very good in in terms of that also okay so this is what uh, is the same so i will just uh, uh,